let's continue. The lecture 8 is dedicated to knowledgeable analysis of the modernity. I presume that um, now uh, it is more or less easy to, to anticipate what will be the result of this analysis. Uh, first of all, uh, I would suggest uh, the reading of the traditionalist school, very important authors as René Guénon, uh, Julius Evola, Titus Burkhardt, Fritjof Schoen, uh, Michel Valzan, or, or Nasser, who have explained that the modernity is a special concept. So, the modernity is not something that has to do with contemporarity, because now in contemporary, in actual moment, we could have modern society, pre-modern society, post-modern society, archaic society, society with religious, uh, middle age uh, type of society, but living in today worlds. So, uh, in contemporary, it, it is not, that doesn't mean modern. That is very important aspect, conceptual element. So modernity, when we are speaking about modernity, we don't speak about what is, exists now. It is description of kind, of type, of society, of structure, of uh, uh, existential horizon, of civilization. That is a little bit atemporal. So we could imagine modernity now. We could imagine modernity belonging to the past or to the future. And that is already very important. So if we consider the modernity not as the fate, oh, we have it now and we will have it tomorrow and so on. So we are obliged to be modern. And traditionalists I've heard that to be modern is decision. You can be modern, you can be not modern. And they have mm, created the con two concepts, the tradition, the tradition, and the modernity. Tradition and modernity. So modernity, it is not what uh, something actual. That is a kind of society or civilization, of world vision, of picture, of the reality. That is one thing, and there is tradition. There's the picture of reality, the civilization, the culture, the society, that is different. And between them, a third, the traditionalist, there is antagonism. Antagonism. That is very important because that gives us the possibility to study modernity, not as something inevitable, but as something that is the product of concrete, concrete historical development based on concrete sequence of decisions and choices. And the, majority, uh, the modernity is artificial, I would say. It was artificially created. It is not something that uh, went by itself. So modernity is not natural. Modernity is, was created, is supported, is defended, is adjusted, is developed, but there is a kind of free will behind the majority. That is not fatality. There is not mechanical law of modernity. Because we know many societies that are, are not modern. For example, Islamic society, Indian society in some aspect, uh, archaic society, they are not modern. They exist today. And if we consider the majority of the mankind, of humanity, today, 
the 21st century lives not in the modern society. The, the society, they belong to traditional society. So modernity has nothing to do, has something to do with contemporary world, but we, we could study, we should understand that separately from contemporary. And uh, we could uh, speak about structure of modernity. So modernity is something structural, constructed, and that could be deconstructed. It should be deconstructed. Postmodernist philosophy is based precisely on this, on deconstruction of modernity. With their spe spe special aspect, I, uh, but that is possible. And deconstruction of modernity, and that is crucial point, and knowledge could be made from two positions. It could be made, the construction of modernity, with postmodernists, with their hyper-modern ethics. So they are disappointed, postmodernists, majority of postmodernists are disappointed with the moder modernity because they, uh, didn't, uh, the modernity didn't uh, fulfill its promises. Uh, the, uh, doesn't satisfy them, their, their hopes and anticipations. So that is a kind of uh, despair. Uh, they are in despair that modernity couldn't accomplish the goal it de declared. So that is postmodernity in the sense that modernity is, is too small. It, it is not enough. The modernity is not enough and they try to deconstruct modernity in order to, to show that it should be overcome, in order to create what modernity wanted to do, but couldn't accomplish by inner limitations. In the eyes of postmodernism, the modernity was too traditional, too traditional, excessively traditional. That modernity could not overcome tradition, but it should and it shall with the postmodernity. So that is a kind of deconstruction of modernity that shows that modernity is not so much modern as it needed, as it needed to be in the eyes of postmodernist ethic. But what is interesting in this method, they show the artificial doing that. They show artificial nature of modernity, that modernity is creation. That modernity is based on the decision. So if we could deconstruct something, that someone has constructed that. So we can use some methods of postmodernity precisely dealing with modernity. But what is much more important, that is the other possibility to deconstruct the modernity in a much more radical way than postmodernist criticism. Critics. That is traditionalism that regards the modernity as a kind of the type of the structure that was created against the tradition. So that is consider consideration of modernity as anti-tradition. It could be represented as a kind of reversal of all traditional values. And what was in the traditional society with the sign plus and the modernity is with minus. So that is a kind of uh, re reversal of the traditional state of thing as well. That was the, based on decision, subversion, the will to destroy and to exchange uh, the thesis with anti-thesis in some way. So modernity is anti antithesis for tradition. That is traditionalist position. And what is interesting that if postmodernists they agree with the goal of modernity, so they they criti cr uh, criticize modernity as something not enough, or something not sufficient. But traditionalists criticize the modernity as something awful, as something completely negative as nihilism, as destruction, as perversion, as subversion, as uh, demonic design uh, of reality, or as a kind of antichrist 
in civilization created by the conscious, conscious uh, partisans of, of the settler. So the modernity in the eyes of traditionalists is conscious satanic creation. So there is traditional divine society, divine world, divine soul, and there is satanic uh, tradition, satanic uh, or, or order, satanic of things, satanic cosmos, and so on. That is very interesting because this kind of deconstruction of modernity uh, exists as well, including in our world, uh, world, and we could use both. In order to deal with modernity, we could have deconstruction from the left, postmodern deconstruction, with elaborated methodology, with traditional uh, deconstruction. So I don't ex insist now on um, who is right. I try to, to show that there are two possibilities to deal with modernity outside of the pretensions of modernity. Because modernity say, oh, that is necessary, this mechanical law of uh, development, the progress, uh, the man is good, the man is developing, uh, the progress is inevitable, uh, and so on. All that is questioned by postmodernity, and all this, this is questioned by traditionalism. And we, if we unite both criticism, methodologically, we, uh, we obtain something completely new. So we see joining both methodologies, we see at least one thing for certain, that we are dealing with something absolutely artificial, because both criticism shows that with all the power of persuasion of scientific approach with from different position and that is very very important so we could regard the modernity as something conceptual structural and in some way in some way eternal so modernity exists not only in in contemporary world but it is structural if we could uh, describe the modernity with mathematical for example, structure, values, anti-values, plus, minus. If we could, could have the, the kind of formula of modernity, so it could not be contemporary. So this formula could, could exist in the, in the, the different, different contexts. So that opens to us uh, the way to analyze the modernity as something that uh, that uh, could be turned from the contemporary, contemporary moment. So that is very important. So we could, um, could study modernity as we are studying, for example, Chinese culture or Roman culture in the same way. So that, that's a something that is accomplished, but that belongs to some, uh, some eternal, eternal uh, text uh, we, 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 could, we could scale to, to choose different scales we could uh, go closer go further from modernity so that is object modernity is the object of the study and when we uh, try to to to, uh, to, no, to concretize in neurological a no machia perspective. What is modernity? We have already spoken. That is the anti-Christianism, because uh, we had in our European history, European history, we had tradition about uh, which traditionalists speak in the form of Christian tradition, and we have shown in the previous lecture, how this Christian tradition included in itself pre-Christian uh, pre structures and, uh, in the European laws. So, tradition now, in this neological version, is the same as Christianity, but at the same time 
is the same as the, the alliance between Logos of Apollo with Logos of Dionysus in concrete historical Christian form. So that was and is tradition that we could identify and as well describe as type. So if we have this concrete and positive description of what is tradition, it is not something vague. It is concrete. That is logos of Apollo with uh, its, its structures, its symmetry, verticality, with uh, logos of Dionysus, uh, uh, purified Dionysus, uh, Di Apollonian Dionysus in, in, in case of dialectic embedded in this, in this version. So everything is quite concrete. And we try, for example, to, to deny all that, to, to, to make a kind of reversal of that. We receive the other type, no Apollo, no Dionysus, and now it is not only nihilism or destruction or parody, as traditionalists say, but in our neological analysis we see clearly what is a so-called positive content of modernity? So the modernity is not only destruction, the chaos, the anti, 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 against, against, against. It is not nihilus. <coughs> In the eyes of Logos of Apollo, there is no Logos of CBD. There is nothing. There is destruction, matter, or something. But in three Logos concept, in no market, there is a Logos of CBD. There, there is. Uh, there is a kind of structure that we could imagine, that we could describe with positive inner relations. That is why no machia and no logic is so important now, because we, thanks to no machia, we have the key to deeper and a better understanding on what is what is. Uh, modernity, because in that when um, uh, traditionalists criticize uh, uh, the modernity, they use negative term that is over uh, um, overthrow of the traditional values, uh, negative nihilism. That is conservative discourse. They belong to the tradition. They belong to logos of Apollo and Dionysus, and they consider that the end of this. Uh, situation as the end of time, so there's nihilism, the negative terms. And maybe that is the reason why they could not get the essence of modernity. Because the modernity is purely negative for them. As it is purely negative, uh, purely positive for modernists. They could, as well, they could not understand the modernity because it is for them that's all. That's beauty, that's progress, that is, that is something in the middle, that's nature, that, that uh, 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 ca uh, casual sequence of the events that we could not change, something uh, predefined. They could not, modernists don't understand the modernity. And traditionalists understand better than modernists, but in negative way. So they, they as well, they understand not enough. And with no Mahia, we could say, no, there is not only destruction, there is not only nihilism, there is not only chaotic transformation. That is new laws. That, not new so much. That there are other laws, third one. And if we apply to the modernity this uh, concept, we uh, we obtain completely new vision and perspective to understand the modernity. And modernity is in the reality ancient. And that is not a paradox. It is absolutely ancient because it is precedent to the Indo-European Turanian invasion. So we are dealing not with the, something new. We are dealing in the modernity with something very, very old that existed before, before in the European invasion, before Turanian Logos of Apollo. So, in that case, 
The modernity is old, and in the European tradition, Christianity is new, something new, because it was after, it, it came after. And the modernity is a return, return to the pre in the European aspect of civilizations. That is an extremely important remark, because now we are dealing not with something as the end of some natural construction. There is nothing natural in human history. Everything is based on the laws. So modernity is a moment of no here that is that came as the new attack of titans against the gods. And this one that is successful attack. So the modernity is the victory of the titans of Sibylle, of the serpent, over God. Successful attack. So that is the moment of no Mahia that existed in, in potential, potentially as possibility, always. And when the, 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 the power of light became too, too weak, too small, the, the titans, they, have, they were liberated from the hell, from the chains, and they made interruption again in the realm of the order, and they have submitted the humanity to their rule. So that is not, mm, not purely negative description. <coughs> there is there is event, and we could speak about the logos of modernity. So the, moder the modernity has a logos. Uh, in order to uh, to trace the modernity, we could come to the event or the, the time uh, when modernity started. That was the end of Middle Ages, and Renaissance time was the border time. So that was precisely the moment where this Nomachia and Titanomachia um, reached the critical, critical stage in Renaissance. That is the name for the special battle between Logos of Apollo against the Logos of Sibylle, where the battle was lost by gods. The ba battle uh, was lost by, in the European tradition, the battle was lost by these patriarchal, patriarchy, existential horizon, in favor of this, of this alternative Logos. And we see multiple aspect of that. Uh, that is beginning of capitalism, of bourgeois, of national state. Uh, that was beginning of secularization of the state and the society, the end of Christianity. And that was reflected in the science, because the modern science is a kind of necessary aspect of the modernity. So we are living in the world where our understanding of the reality is based on the science. And this science, modern science, it is called modern science, to, to make a difference, difference with uh, uh, Middle Ages science, this science is very special. We could consider its structure. When we begin to read the first texts of author of, of modern science, we see very special feature. They criticize Aristotle. Aristotle that was a kind of dogmatic scientific concept of Middle Ages and that was scholastic, that was Christian, and in orthodox context Aristotle and I um, teaching was adapted by John Damaskin to Orthodox 
Christianity, uh, Orthodox doctrine, uh, and the Western Christianity that was scholastic tradition, based on combination between Platonic and Aristotelian concept. And Aristotle and at the second, at the lesser scale, Plat Plat Platonism were overthrown in the beginning of the scientific, scientific world vision. And we could trace what concretely was attacked, how this Titan and Machia uh, were developed in this um, in the field of the um, scientific theories. I have dedicated my first thesis to the concept of uh, creation and appearance of modern science. First of all, there was the criticism against a natural places theory of Aristotle, a natural or, or anisotropic version of the space. Anisotropic version of the space uh, or understanding of the space of the natural places Aristotelian theory was based on the concept of what is mm, movement. According to Aristotle, every, everything has its own goal, its own entity here, and the goal is the final reason. So that is equivalent uh, with natural space. So everything has its natural space. And the movement of the thing, it is moving towards this natural place. When the thing reaches its natural space, the movement ends. So the movement is because all the things are not in the natural space. They are moving towards them, but they prevent each other to get there. And that defines the, the nature of movement. So every, everything strives to reach its natural space. And because it is a little chaotic under, under the sphere of moon, according to Aristotle, there is chaotic movement. So everybody hurt the other. So no, nobody is in its own our space. Only God has reached from the beginning. Internally, he is in, in, in his space, natural space. Everything other is out. And that is why everything is living. Everything is moving. That's uh, the uh, explanation of the nature of um, kinetic movement. But that creates uh, the special, special space with the center, absolute center, and absolute center for, for each, each thing. There is the absolute center for each thing is its natural place. So everything is striving somewhere, somewhere that is more important and more natural for things than other place. So you could be uh, at home, the concept of home, very important. The home is natural place. We are, we are going home, and everything is going home. It is return. It is return to the God, but only God is in its, his own place. That is an uh, immovable uh, mover, say, immutable. It is something that moves everything, but is not moved by anything. That's the concept. So the space, or the, or, or, or the cosmos, is theocentric. The space is theocentric, and there is a kind of sacred, sacred geography with the special sacred centers, with special points of cult, and uh, all, all cosmos has the meaning, the structure, and reason. So there is a center. The main attack of Galileo Galilei, Copernicus, and the other was again this concept of the natural place. Therefore, there is no natural place, and there is no uh, final reason. There is only casual reason. So there is the reason of movement. If someone, uh, something, make uh, impact on other thing, so there is 
casualties reason, but final reason doesn't exist. Because there is no, no, no goal, there is no teleology of the movement, and there is no center, absolute center. Everything is related. Everything is moving chaotically, as in Aristotelian version, uh, but with no plan, with no goal, and everything is uh, defined by the previous cause. So the cause is belongs to the past, and and no, there is no cause of the future. There is no eschatology, no goal. There is something is casual. Everything is casual, and there is no center. There is no central space, uh, center in space, everything is related. So there, there is no anisotropic space, there is isotropic space. Isotropic space, so you go anyway with the same, uh, with the same uh, possibility, because there is no natural space for things. So everything is absolutely relativism. And that was destruction of Apollonian structure of space and time, and thing, and destiny, and history, everything is destroyed with that. So, and that was so-called scientific discovery. Uh, Postmodernists showed that that was publicity, that was the, the, the war of the school of laboratory, all, everything in Galileo Galilei was a kind of trick uh, uh, organized in order to convince the, the um, audience uh, that he, he is great, but his personal motivations we could put aside. But what was the, the, the meaning of Galileo Galilei and the other father, uh, founding father of modernity? They destroyed Logos of Apollo, represented in Ari Plato and Aristotle, by the Logos of Sibylle. And the Logos of, of Sibylle was not their discovery. That was a uh, return to the, to the third form of ancient Greek pre-Socratic philosophy, represented by Democritus and later by Epicurus and Lucretius. They were put aside uh, in the Christian version. Christian uh, world vision was based on Plato and Aristotle, and Democritus and Epicurus and Lucretius, Lucretius were put aside, were, were, were oh, forgotten. They, they, were, they, were, 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 they were purged, I would say, by uh, Logos of uh, Apollo, because they belonged to the other vision, atomistic vision, to the materialistic vision, with, that was Already in the ancient time, before Plato, Plato they were anti-Indo-European and they belonged to the context of Logos of Sibylle. And they reappear in the Renaissance. So that is not new. That was something that was denied, that was put off, that was, that was prohibited, I would say. That is a, a, some as a prohibited knowledge that reappeared as a dominating one. So, postmodernists show that there was nothing convincing in the new ideas. And they won not because they were more true. They uh, have won because they, uh, they won. Because there was the kind of the, something changed in the mind of the Renaissance man that has opened the way to Logos of Sibylle to return with scientific premises. There was atomism. Atomism belonged to the past. Atomism was rejected by Christian version of uh, structure of cosmos, but by Christian cosmology, and it returned with uh, Boyle, with Newton, with Gassendi, with uh, Hobbes, with Descartes. So that was a kind, uh, and that is not the, uh, the chance that Marx has dedicated his doctorate to relations between Epicurus and Democritus. So the most modern uh, uh, philosopher of uh, 19th century, 
was uh, dealt uh, in his doctorate with a uh, very old problem of the matter, of the atomism, of the, uh, the uh, uh, evolution. Because evolution, that of almost Darwinian mm. type, we see Lucretius. Lucretius in his poem that was the idea of the evolution of the species. So everything uh, in the beginning, the species uh, were confused, and little by little they they developed into the creatures we know. So and that was by uh, by the Venus, by the Holy Mother that was produced. And in Lucretius, there is purely Sibelian topics with purely scientific. So in this Lucretius uh, uh, concept, there are as well black gods in the Democritus. Democritus say that the gods as well ha 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 have uh, bodies and diamonds as well. So that was atomic. So they live more than the body of, of, of human, but they as well die. They are so dying gods of Democritus, black gods or diamonds. So there was a mixture between scientific and mythological m uh, uh, topics, but what kind of mythology was that? That was purely materialistic, Tonian and Sibelian, uh, Sibelian uh, uh, mythology. So uh, at the same time, uh, destruction of verticality of old order of old Middle Ages uh, doctrine uh, and Christian and uh, Christian uh, teaching uh, was replace uh, destruction that was replacement by new world vision based on Sibelian Sibelian uh, ideology we could say Sibelian ideology is strictly materialist and immanentist. There is no heaven, there is no transcendental God, there is substance, and everything grows from this substance. And, ev and, and the growth has reason, as cause, but has no final reason. Because the, this growth is something that uh, confuses, it is kind of uh, growth as such, with no reason, so that is a kind of um, uh, imminent process. Uh, and uh, there is no uh, uh, attractor, there is no, uh, no point uh, to which this growth uh, leads, because <laughs> that is the, the huge uh, immanent, subs immanent substance that has the goal in itself. So the reason is, the cause is, the final reason um, uh, is not. So that was reflected in the cosmology of Copernicus. That is not the shift from geocentric to uh, 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 heliocentric doctrine, but that uh, the, the, the reason of Copernican, uh, Copernican revolution was there is no, no center at all. Everything is relative. So uh, there is uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the earth was not the center, was not na natural place to, of incarnation of God, so it is something casual. The, the Earth is something casual. It's some uh, it's some ball that is uh, uh, revolving around some other uh, fire ball and so on. In the in the context of the other uh, other balls in, in the uh, infinite, uh, uh, disordered, chaotic, atomic tradition. What is important that. According to Democritus, atom could be small, invisible, or great. As, uh, so that, that is something like very modern concept of, 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 the, of, the, of the body, of the heavenly body, of the particle, uh, and, and so on. So uh, uh, that was, uh, that was uh, reflected in the scientific vision, and what is considered today to be scientific, is based, it is the same as civilian. Civilian is scientific. What is not civilian, what for example insists on the existence of natural place, is not scientific, is mythological. But there is the 
change of the logos, and uh, but that was not Im immediately. They uh, the logos of CBV in scientific uh, world vision uh, appropriated some aspect of Apollonian rationalism uh, uh, of. Uh, logic uh, of uh, dialectic, Dionysian dialectic, but everything was put under this sign of symbole. So that was a kind of uh, post-Apollonian uh, culture, and that was different with pre-Apollonian uh, uh, kingdom or civilization of Lepensky Vir or Vincha or uh, um, Chatal Guyuk. So, uh, the, the civilization of Great Mother was uh, pre-Apollonian and modernity is the same civilization with the same structure, with the same logos, but post-Apollonian. So, that was appropriation of methods, of logic, of philosophy, and put under control of this materialistic, atomistic, uh, immanentistic, substantialist um, uh, domination. That was reflected in the politics. Very, very interesting. That was destruction of empire. That was the essence of modern politics. Because empire, as we have seen, was the normative organization of Christian political space. In Byzantine sense, but as well in the Western Catholic, Catholic uh, sense. So, the concept of modern state modern state and concept of nation were two concepts directed against empire. So that was atomic vision of the state. The state of a social political atom with no reason and the difference between nation, modern state and the empire, there is no reason, uh, final reason, there is no natural space, there is no function or mission of catacomb. That was the national statehood is directed against catechonical mission. So it is di directed against the sacredness of empire and mission of empire. Modern state by definition of Jean Baudin or Thomas Hobbes is created from below as a kind of social contract it, and that is Leviathan in Hobbes. The modern state is not reflection of the heavenly paradigm. It is created that has no reason, has no final reason. It has reason as cause. It, the reason of this uh, modern state is social contract. So it is created by the people, by the individuals, in order to prevent them from the other individuals. So that is completely different concept of politics. And that is very, uh, it is a revelation that Hobbes has called the Leviathan, the serpent, the modern state. Modern state is serpent, is a dragon that is mechanical, mechanically organized from below on, in order to destroy everything that is sacred. The modern state is directed against the empire and its region. And that appeared precisely in the Renaissance with uh, scientific vision, with this completely new understanding of the religion, uh, and the modern state should be secular. Secular, so with no religious sense. It could have church, Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox, but church should be separated and existed outside of politics. So the modern state is titanic and modern national state is anti-Christian, anti-traditional, and anti-European, anti-Apollonian and Dionysian. It is purely titanic. It is serpent and dragon. And as such, it was introduced as Leviathan uh, in the beginning of the, uh, uh, of the modernity. So, we have, uh, what is nation? Nation, as well, that is concept that appeared precisely in modern 
meaning in the Renaissance time. A nation, it is the people or population, better, population, living inside of national state. So nation is absolutely artificial. Uh, and that is the uh, community of citizens. Citizens who are those who have created the social contract. So the citizens is participating in social contracts and citizen can re, uh, uh, redefine concluding the other social contracts, the state. For example, the citizen could conclude that they don't want to uh, live anymore in Belgium and they want to have Flemish state or a Wallonian state. They have all the right because the Belgium has no reason. Has, it is not reflection of something that is trans transcendental. It is the result of social contracts. So the people can create Yugoslavia, can destroy Yugoslavia if they want. They want because there is no Yugoslavia. There is no, uh, no France. There is no, no Belgium, there is no German. So they could easily create one Libyan fund or destroy if they think that is better for, for them. So that is absolutely immanent concept of the politics. And it could be reflected in the vertical structure of state as a tradition of pre civilian in the European tradition. But it is from the beginning titanic. That is the new kind of hierarchy, titanic bureaucracy, bureaucracy, with new type of dominating figure. This type we should uh, regard and describe carefully, because the, uh, in modern state there are not the priests. It's clear that secularism put the priests outside of the government. So they could exist as cultural institution on the margin, for example, as cults or funerals or weddings, something like uh, not so important, but less and less important because the uh, putting the marginalization of the church is the process of the modernity, political modernity, and church should be put more and more outside of the political decision. The, in the case of the warrior, warriors that were a uh, uh, noble class, the no aristocracy of the traditional, um, traditional uh, state, they should be marginalized as well. They should be a kind of mercenary uh, by state. They could not have their arms with them. They should because the arm was a symbol, a possession of arm, the symbol of, of warrior, they take the arm from the state. And when the state thinks that that is enough for them to fight, the state take the arms uh, back. And it is difficult with sword, uh, but it is easy with cannon or tank. So development of the state, state weapon, or nuclear weapon, you could not possess it, being aristocrat warrior with little nuclear uh, 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 missile uh, uh, with uh, private ownership. So, um, uh, but if you have no weapon, you're not autonomous warrior. You are just hired mercenary that serve as a servant uh, with something that is given to you by the state, and that is decided bureaucratically. So, warrior is not the type that decides. Uh, priests are not the type who decides, and who decides. And there appears a new figure, bourgeois. That is very, that we are calling that capitalist system, we are calling this bourgeois system. And uh, Bourgeois is uh, a normative figure in the modernity and political way. 
And now we, 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 we should regard or make kind of structural analysis of what is it. What is it? It is conventional wisdom that, that bourgeois belongs to the third state, tiers etat, third state. That is third function. There we are. First priests, second warriors, and bourgeois third. And it is called tiers etat in French. Tiers etat, tretiers of slavery in Russia. But here lays misunderstanding. Very interesting misunderstanding because uh, it is represented by <coughs> the, the man that lives in the city, bourgeois, and is occupying with the commerce, his commerce and commercial. That is bourgeois. So, but this figure was absent in the Turanian society that was nomadic, and was very marginal in the traditional sedentary European and in the European society where <coughs> existed third function, third function, pastoralists and kettlers in one case, and peasants in the other case. But they were not bourgeois. So third function in the classical, in the European society, was all peasant or cattle, and not the merchant, merchant living in the city. So bourgeois is something new. It was as normative sense. We could not say that that is traditional third function that overcome first and second. It is not tiers etat in the Indo-European sense. There is something else. And bourgeois and merchant living in the city is not cattle. He has nothing to do with coals, with sheep, with goats. And he has nothing to do with laboring earth. So he is not peasant. He is torn from that. But who that is? Who is bourgeois? is something that is between uh, warrior and peasant. That is very lazy peasant that w doesn't want to uh, work on the earth. And it is um, covered as a uh, uh, warrior because he could not affront the death. He is in the middle, lazy peasant and covert warrior. So it is a slave. It is a kind of, in the Russian uh, language, there is Holop, the name, Holop. Uh, Holop, um, it is slave of the master. So he helps to master to, to live good. So um, it is not a, a servant, we could say. Uh, it is not free or not free peasant working and it's filled, maybe paying taxes or on giving something else. He doesn't participate in the battle. So he is between people and aristocracy, between second and first functions and third. Because the cities in the European cities were created, founded by warriors in order to be a kind of fortress, in order in their military strategic. Uh, relations with the space and with the people, so they were a kind of secondary worker uh, serving these um, warriors. And that was artificial class that grew, uh, that has grown with the growth of the commercial uh, commerce in this, um, in this city. So they appearance as an important class begins precisely in the same moment with, uh, when begins the civilian uh, revenge. Right. So they is special form of, of new type, sociological type, living in the city, busy with the commerce, and 
the, that is important that the symbol of Sibylle, traditional symbol, uh, symbol, that the Sibylle has the town as the crown, the crown in form of town. So the, 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 uh, there is something bourgeois in that uh, crown of town, and uh, there is something perverted in the commerçants. So the, to, 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 be, to, to, uh, to be busy with commerce in our traditional Christian and Indo-European logic, we have no pattern, we have no example, we have no place for that, because it, it is not war, it is not walk, uh, it is not uh, right, religious rights. It's something that has no place in the traditional society, but it could exist in the margin of the society in order to facilitate some technical aspect, but that never, never was a kind of class or function that never had its own mythology, its own, its own ethic, its own tradition. And we, 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 we see in bourgeois something completely unnatural for our tradition. And bourgeois dealing with the commerce and with the exchange uh, they, they say mild commerce, douce commerce, it's not war, because they are covered. They, they, they could not take away, as the warrior make, or they could peacefully work for their fields, with, in, in, embedded in the traditional society, with many cultural traditions concerning any, any step in life, or that is the peasant life. That, is the peasant turned from the tradition that is warrior that could not uh, fight. So that is perversion. The bourgeois is the ill type. It is completely sick, sociological uh, sickness, a, a representation of perversion in our traditional way. So at, at the majority of bourgeois were peasants, but the peasants turn from their natural state. And when the peasant, that by some reason has lost its possibility, its field, its possibility, its place in the village, in its normal place, in its natural place of peasant, when it loses it, it comes to town. But who is the peasant in town? Nobody. He is idiot. Idiot in Greek sense that uh, the, the person with no collective identity. So that is something in individual that is atom, atomic. And the atom was the basis of the uh, new science, uh, materialistic science of Renaissance. So the, that is new and old figure, but that had no place in the traditional society. So that, that is something that, sh uh, that was regarded with, uh, uh, with pity, maybe, in traditional society. It is ill peasant, because lazy, uh, or too arrogant, and it is covert warrior that uh, uh, didn't want to fight. So, that is perversion. It could always be an uh, uh, underclass being. So, bourgeois is underclass. Bourgeoisie is underclass. The, 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 the group of Sick, met, perverted, anti-normal, anti-normal uh, human being that are idiotical by semantic definition. So they have no organic relations with collective identity. Their identity is artificially constructed. So they didn't belong to the traditional traditional um, warrior or agricultural societies, and they were devoid of any organic collective qualities. So they came to the city and they tried to find their way. And that is not the case that uh, uh, bourgeois were um, some from other, other places or uh, other, uh, other, other ethnical group, because they were individuals put in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the city and not belonging to 
the traditional corporation uh, and form. And they began to grow in number and they began to define the normative vision of the social, social, uh, uh, social type, normative type. They, they have dethroned warriors, they have dethroned priests, and they have uh, as well misrepresented third, third state because they hated, the bourgeois hates the peasants because it um, uh, exploits him. He uh, don't let him to sell his things openly because he, he uh, buy it by itself and they make a speculation. They are speculators. They don't produce nothing and they make a kind of bulls, uh, uh, balls of, uh, uh, of, uh, um, of money in order to, 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 to manipulate with production. So they are unproductive, bourgeois is unproductive, peasants uh, are, were productive. So, but at the same time, bourgeois were partly pe pe peasants. Because they came to town from where? Some part from other, other ethnic groups or some marginal groups. They became bourgeois, but the majority, the growth of bourgeois state was from peasants. But now we see the real, real no logical mystery. But who were the peasants, European peasants? They were the, the member of a civilization of Sibili under control of uh, in the European uh, horizon, and when they were turned from this <coughs> controlled structure, they could the, the, the origins of this keep Sibelian origins of the uh, peasantry could reveal. So that is a kind of liberation of the deepest level of peasant European identity that taking from the special Christian and traditional uh, aristocracy, feudal vertical society was liberated. So they were bearers of some very ancient, <coughs> ancient archetypes of ancient collective and consciousness that was reanimated precisely in the moment of the end of the Middle Ages. So we see that uh, modernity uh, uh, and all political theory that were developed in the later phases of modernity dealt with this bourgeois organization. Uh, the, uh, the pure and the most important glorification of bourgeois is liberalism. So it is dealing with idiots, idiots in semantical sense, because the man devoid of any kind of collective identity is idiot in Greek sense. Uh, so uh, liberalism is from the beginning idiotism. So that is glorification of idiots, the, the, mm, the individuals devoid of any, of any collective identity, it's clear. And, but the, the communism is, uh, is dealing with the same concept. So they, they have, uh, they, uh, because communists hated as well peasants. They think that everything is, uh, is developing in the city. So, and the poor uh, bourgeois are proletarian. The rich bourgeois are bourgeois, but both of them are purely uh, modern in the conceptual, structural uh, <coughs> sense, industrial figures living in the city, not outside of the city. So communism was the idea that poor uh, bourgeois should overcome rich bourgeois and um, create uh, uh, creates the society where proletarian um, should they uh, should uh, dominate over bourgeois. But who are proletarian? 
that were ex peasant coming to 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 city with uh, with no poor uh, ex peasants, and these ex peasants were devoided precisely in the communist conception from relations with the traditional society, and that was positive in the eyes of of communists. So they were not more peasant, and being no more peasant in uh, communist eyes was the same as having no relations with religion, with the cult, with the culture, with the language, with, with the traditions, and so on. They were as well a kind of the other form of idiots. They were rich idiots, or more or less easy idiots. Uh, bourgeois, as basic figure of liberalism, and poor idiots as were proletarians. But they should be cut from tradition, from tradition state, priests, warriors, or peasants, and they should be put in the artificial commercial structure, commer commercial spaces of the modern bourgeois city. Uh, that was the, one of the idea of communism, that, that, and that was good. If we read uh, Marx's uh, manifest, the first, the majority of it, it, it dedicated what communism is not, Marxist communism. And uh, Marxism, uh, Marx and Engels, they uh, stressed that it is not enough to be anti-bourgeois to the communist. It is necessary to be post-bourgeois and not pre-bourgeois. And the criticism of the first part of Manifest of the uh, Communist uh, Party was, was directed against so-called aristocracy, anti-bourgeois, anti-capitalist tradition that were as well anti-bourgeois, anti but uh, pretending to restore some pre-bourgeois tradition. So, communism say no, in, that com in comparison with uh, feudal uh, or traditional society, the communists should be on the on the side of bourgeois of capitalism, but they should not only uh, destroy traditional society, but they should help to destroy traditional society. But after the poor uh, citizen of the city, bourgeois, it is as well that burger, that uh, someone who lives in the burg in the city, in town, poor uh, citizen should overcome rich citizen after destroying any kind of traditional society. So, proletarians, as bourgeois, are absolutely untraditional. They are two concepts of two idiotic, semantically idiotic concepts, because there is rich idiot and poor idiot, po idiots, and poor idiots and the communist vision should uh, when rich idiots take Krishnas from them and distribute with, among the idiots. And where, where is the peasants in this situation? They should be transformed in proletariat. They should be brought to the cities. That is the concept of how to merge the villages with the city. That the, that the village was the enemy of Marxism, of communism. So village should be destroyed and transformed in the city and the peasant should be transformed into worker, and worker, workers should be normally industrial workers living in the city, working in the fabric. So that is as well mechanical vision, so that was materialistic as well as liberalism. And uh, uh, that is sort of second political theory. Third, third political theory was as well absolutely civilian. That is maybe difficult for certain with patriotic feeling, but um, uh, the idea that modern state is artificial creation, modern state is based on destruction of empire, modern state is based on the social contract, and nation is artificial creation of bourgeois. Bourgeois is uh, nation is bourgeois concept. Purely bourgeois concept. It is not organic community with the state, with warriors, priests, and peasants. The nation is the concept in center of which is the chauvinistic, egoistic uh, citizen of the city, uh, and 
the state is created as the city, not, not as empire. And the peasants, as well, were considered to be secondary for. So th th they live between one city and the other. They have no space, proper space. They were considered as citizen, but the term citizen, term citizen. City is town. Peasant is not citizen. He's, he, he, he's villager. So if in the normative concept of pol political na na nationalism, peasants were included, they, we, we should speak citizens and villagers, for example. But we are speaking not only about citizens, because we consider peasants to be the, the, um, the citizens, the, 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 the towners of the second sort. So they were a, a subhuman in some way, politically subhuman, in nationalist, communist, and as well liberal concept. So that was the split in the th third function uh, of uh, in the beginning of modernity, uh, the, the split between uh, in the European peasantry, traditional, and this ex-peasantry, ex-peasants coming to to town and becoming becoming bourgeois or proletarian or nationalist. So that is why all three political theories. Communism, liberalism, and nationalism are in absolutely CBLN because national, modern nationalism is modern, is based on the bourgeois concept. So that is artificial unity of the uh, citizens that um, ac accentuate not only the freedom of uh, commerce but most the defense of their own commercial interests by a nation or bureaucracy or state. So, uh, we have, um, uh, uh, now we could apply that to geosophy of Europe. Uh, where, where started the modernity? The modernity started in, partly in Italy, partly in uh, uh, the um, northern part of Europe, but the most uh, uh, clear and most uh, bright uh, examples of modernity was uh, uh, Great Britain that uh, began uh, creation of this bourgeois version. They, that was not revolutionary bourgeois, uh, but evolutionary uh, bourgeois history. They tried to introduce more and more bourgeois elements in the government. So Hobbes uh, was one of English uh, uh, politi politician, uh, politician theorists, uh, political theorists. But with Cromwell and with Protestantism, with revolution, that was the bourgeois revolution. That was the, that was, uh, and the uh, um, uh, killing of the Tsar, of the monarch, of the, uh, that was a kind of symbolical action of the strongment of the traditional in the European uh, logos. And Protestantism was, as well as we have seen, a kind of uh, titanism inside of Christianity. And all, this, all these elements, the development of bourgeois, the uh, rigid seat, the killing of, of monarch, and Protestant, Protestantism, uh, that, that was the England that was in the, in the center. And the fight of, uh, of English, Englishmen against Celt Catholic was in a drama, because that was the majority was on the side of Anglo-Protestants. And tradition, in their case, in this bipolarity case of English culture, tradition and uh, uh, continuity was on the side of the Celt. So that is why the Celts were, in that sense, uh, defenders, the last defenders of more or less, more or less traditional society in front of purely uh, modernist civilian, uh, civilian um, uh, English society. It is, it is very interesting that uh, 
there was traditional concept of four empires in Christian, uh, in Christian culture. The first empire was Assyrian, the second empire was Achaemenid, the uh, uh, third empire was Greek, and the fourth empire was Roman. And that was considered, that was put in the context with Daniel, uh, prophet Daniel vision of the, uh, of the giant. Giant with the gold head, with uh, silver breast, with um, um, copper uh, meat. Meat. Uh, metal. Bronze. 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 Uh, and um, uh, thighs and uh, uh, iron, iron uh, foots. And that was uh, iron foods uh, represented Roman Empire, most radical but traditional empire. And so, uh, in and uh, this this tradition uh, um, had to uh, had some uh, uh, ties with catechon. That was tra transition of catechon, and the Roman Empire was considered to be the last one when the Christ uh, was born. So that is, we, we have normal concept of four empire, empires and the fourth empire was Roman. Roman, Byzantine, they say Roman, including all the continuation with Third Rome and, and so on, with Russia and so Bulgarian kingdoms and uh, so on. And um, the idea that in the English Britain revolution there was the concept of the fifth empire fifth empire uh, that was called fifth monarchism that was tendency that that should be the other empire beyond Roman one beyond that was considered beyond the Rome as Catholic so that was a kind modern secular Protestant Empire, and that was called Fifth Monarchism. And uh, there were two versions of, of it. That was interesting in Dutch, in Holland. There was Jewish version of it, that the first Fifth Empire should be Jewish one. That was uh, among the Jews uh, of the circle of Spinoza, of the philosopher Spinoza. That was, and that was Anglo-Saxon concept of fifth monarchism, and they were linked with the same circles of uh, Protestant English, Protestant living in Holland and coming back to to England to to give the status of fifth monarch to uh, Cromwell. So, but in that story of this giant. Uh, that is the symbol of this fourth empire. There is Ergile, Glina, Ergile uh, concept that in the fits, iron fits of giant, there are something um, as um, uh, sand, we could say. And the, uh, this sand is the fifth element in giant. And thanks to this sand, the giant will fall. So they, there is a kind of symbol of anti-Christian, post-Christian, post-traditional element, fifth element, the sand, that makes all this empire not stable. So the fifth empire is precisely the end of empire, the destruction of empire, destruction of traditional order, because it, is, it has to, to do with sand the fifth element in the vision of Daniel. And that is the concept of fifth empire, of fifth monarchy, that was British empire. British empire was anti-empire. That was based on bourgeois concept, on nationalism, liberalism, socialism was absent. That was the uh, first and the third political theory represented in this British British um, uh, Empire. So, uh, British Empire was the first modern empire that was 
anti-traditional empire, and that was one of the main sources, philosophical uh, as well with the philosophy of common sense. Common sense philosophy is absolutization of the uh, little individual with idiotic um, scale of thought, with no uh, great revelation, some, some mediocrity, the absolutized mediocrity, uh, represented by Reid, by Ferguson, and that was the basic of American North American society, because these Scotland philosophers of common sense, they were considered to be philosophical fathers of uh, North American society. Uh, that was glorification of idiotic minds with uh, uh, very, very, uh, very narrow interest, with pragmatism, with little concern uh, uh, as development of um, Protestant uh, Titanism and positive uh, uh, positivism. I'm calling that positive subject. That is second, second man in the three man theory of Tauler, of a German mystic. So that, uh, uh, that was uh, evolutionary bourgeois, but at the same time in France there was preparation of revolutionary bourgeois concept that well, culmination was uh, in French Revolution with the concept of uh, uh, purely anti-Christian uh, uh, motivation with uh, uh, Scarlet Woman as the symbol of the freedom of the new, new uh, with the killing of monarch. So that was as well the other revolutionary form with socialism already, with the concept of um, preparing socialism, social democracy, idea absolutely immanent, anti-Christian, openly, not, not in the Protestant way, but purely atheistic, materialistic, and Enlightenment theory was a kind of culmination of all this uh, modernity. And so, uh, modernity started with that, with the revenge of Sibylle, and all the history of modernity was a kind of purification of this knowledgeable pattern. So, uh, the, civil, the civil, civilization of Sibylle uh, became more and more and more and more Sibylian. So that was uh, all traces of the previous in the European traditional society were purged, were cleaned. Uh, so that was a kind of creation from more and more perfect uh, logos of Sibyl. And um, because, for example, what was revolutionary uh, 300 years ago, it was con it, after that was considered conservative. That's all. There were new and new and new stages, but that was cre construction of Babel. Babel. That was construction of very ancient uh, type of civilization. And uh, when we are dealing with modern feminism, that, that is the finalization of the process. It is not the, the beginning of something. So when now Sibylle appears as it is, uh, this march of Madonna in New York against Trump with uh, uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of women with rose uh, cats uh, uh, disguise uh, in order to kill the Trump, that is a kind of call for castration, for castration of the male figure that uh, they try to sacrifice Trump as a uh, symbol of uh, patriarchat. So he is a uh, macho, male, uh, complete... Uh, the, the, he is a symbol of, of the previous stage of civilization. So uh, modern feminism and politics and minds in, uh, in the um, education and the so social norms and this uh, uh, juridical acceptance of homosexuality that was the part of the Sibelian procession. Homosexuality, homosexuality was a kind of part of typically uh, Sibelian cult. They participate uh, in, in the procession as special type of priests. The homosexuals are priests of Sibelian. 
So uh, there is now everything come back to the the pure image of uh, that. But feminism uh, didn't start yesterday or, or doesn't start start today. That feminism started with Titanism. The modernity was metaphysically feminist because materialist, because orientated against this heroic type of patriarchy of in the European culture. Bourgeois is feminist class already because it is not warrior, it is not worker, it is parasitic class and that is the, the worst form of uh, feminine nature. It is not in the European or Christian concept of femininity. It's something completely different. It is Sibylian femininity. And uh, Werner Zombard has said that uh, capitalism began with the mistresses. Because when the people uh, had uh, wives, uh, so they were not so obliged to, to have more and more money. But having mistresses, they were obliged to, to participate in the speculations more and more because they, they needed um, excessive amount of money and mistresses were parasites that, uh, that demanded more and more um, with no work, with no... Uh, and so on. It's, uh, according to uh, Werner Zomberg, that was a kind of one of motivation of capitalist development, of capitalist uh, society. But it is anecdotic, but a sociological uh, anecdote. So, uh, but um, uh, all our science is feminist because it is materialist, it's Sibelian, uh, and uh, we are living in the world of Sibeli in the modernity. And now we are, we, we, uh, we are, and we will speak about that later tomorrow, the next, the last session uh, of these lectures, uh, but we are living inside this kind of civilization. So the moment of no magia, we are living uh, uh, in, it is the moment of revenge of pre-Indo-European existential horizon, artificially with bourgeois, or organic but very ancient with our world vision, scientific world vision, based on this lowest level of the peasant's uh, identity of European peasantry. So we have a kind of special, special image now of modernity that is explained as well with Christian vision. That is the end of catechon. The catechon has fallen. The catechon was the, the, the king, the tsar, the emperor that defended traditional society and that was defeated by modern political system with all those democracy, national states, uh, globalization today and that was the faith, the same one, the faith for, for Christian faith that was the faith for traditional, all three traditional function because there is less and less peasants so we have no peasants in Europe, we are losing them uh, everybody is citizen, everybody is bourgeois or poor bourgeois, proletarian, or rich bourgeois. And we are living precisely in the post catechonian uh, um, cycle. So that is uh, when the Saturn is liberated, when, he, uh, when there is a kind of intrusion of underground tendency that we see around us. So everything fits well in this. Uh, no logical analysis. Now we see that this knowledge that could appear a little bit uh, abstract, a little bit too metaphysical, has to do with the reality we're living in. So we are inside of this normality, we are part of this fight and the battle of the logos. And we, we could not be free from that. We are defined absolutely, everything in us is defined by this no, moment of Naomachia. We consider the reality as we are taught, as, we are, as it is imposed. We could not deal with reality as such. 
we are dealing with reality through a kind of reading, the type of reading, through paradigm. And this paradigm is defined now by Logos of Sibeli. But the, know, the, the knowledge that, that there are two other Logos help us to see relativity of modernity and to, uh, to put the modernity in the context of knowledge and to uh, define as well geosophical place we are in. So if French and England were the first in order to promote this in the geosophy of Europe, Latin worlds and Austrian Empire resisted against that. Russia resisted more than others. Ottoman Empire resisted because that was a well traditional society. Uh, but when traditional empires uh, have fallen, new modern states appeared. And being modern, they were doomed in order, if we, uh, if we, we think that they could transmit traditional spirit. Modernity and traditional are incompatible. Creating national state instead of traditional uh, kingdom, we are already doomed. That's the, the, the creation of modern uh, state, Russian or Serbian, is the end of Russian and Serbian. That will be the state, modern but not Russian and not Serbian. What is modern could not be really Serbian or Russian or, or German. It is already simulacrum. It is already something civilian. So that is why uh, maybe that could explain as well, I'm anticipating the next lecture, maybe that could explain as well some aspect of uh, modern Serbian history on Yugoslavia, Serbia, because after uh, uh, liberating from Ottoman Empire that was traditional, that was the chance to, to, to revival, and the chance was lost because that by many reasons. But uh, that's, that's the next uh, lecture. We will maybe openly discuss that. I have some concept. But uh, in order to, to finish, uh, I think that uh, knowledge and geosophy now gives us the key to interpret the world we live in. Please. Uh, so I would just like to run this by you in the anticipation of the lesson tomorrow, kind of the same way. Uh, and um, I would argue that Serbs are actually the chosen children of Sibeli, if we look at our history. So we uh, were liberated as peasants from the Ottoman Empire, which was a catacomb in its very essence. The Sultan is the Caliph, he is the ruler of Dal Islam against Abu Hab, which is the realm of the Satan or Shaitan. Um, the Austrian Empire, the Austrian Empire was also Catechum, he protected the Catholic Ecumena from the Protestant heresy and the Muslim invaders who were Satan in that cosmos. He inadvertently uh, led Russia into a war because the Russian Catechum, the Russian Tsar, entered on our side and we destroyed three empires as ourselves. Now, for, from when, when we uh, created our state, it was, uh, uh, as Ekmetrich, our historian, said, a uh, uh, heaven for peasants. So it was a peasant republic in a sense. Uh, the king was chosen by parliament, eventually. Uh, we also were full of regicide. We killed uh, uh, Knaz Mikhail, we killed uh, Kyle Alexander, we killed uh, Franz Ferdinand, the heir of Katechon of Austria. Uh, so uh, the, the, the reason, uh, the reason gesture of the Serbian state was to protect the Serb, the Serbian people from killing each other via Hajduks and mutual raids, etc., and to protect, to protect them from the Ottoman Empire, and eventually to protect the multitude of religious and ethnic identities inside Yugoslavia from each other and from invasion from Italy and Austria. So it was a purely modernistic reason nature to exist as a state. Um, uh, we had a thing called Timoc Kabuna, which was uh, a rebel from peasants uh, because the state took their weapons away, because it needed to create them from free peasant uh, warriors, in a sense, into servants of the state. We are, in a sense, since our second resurrection, after we were liberated our central Ottoman Empire, the children of Sibeli, and we have remained it ever since, even though we think ourselves as conservatives and traditionalists. So, just the same for tomorrow. Very interesting, very interesting. We, we are going to develop that, but in some sense, we are all children of Sibeli. 
uh, Russian as well, and uh, that is a special idea, but uh, this tendency, matriarchal tendency, is almost prevailing in Russia. We have constructed completely civilian communist society with domination of the mother of iron, so that was, there was nothing heroic in that, that was purely materialistic and matriarchal uh, system, uh, and we had many matriarchal tradition in our peasant, absolutely peasant society. So, we should be, uh, it, it is not um, political propaganda knowledge, so we could um, accept something that is not so pleasant, so we are living in a difficult time, and uh, um, I, I agree, this, uh, that fits very well in this uh, description, and what is going on now in Russia or in Serbia as well. So, uh, but uh, in order to to make correct description of what is going on, we need to understand the, the many levels of that. So, and uh, that is very important that nothing is lost forever. So, in this knowledge, the eternity exists, eternity as possibility. So, if there is something that prevails today, that doesn't mean that will that, that is in eternity. So. So there is the other aspect. So alternative and in Logos, no Bahia could not be closed. It continues. So if it continues that we have something other than you have described, and I'm sure I, I could uh, testify that there is in certain people something other. Sure. Uh, absolutely. And that is, uh, is seen clearly in Russian as well, uh, in other people. So, but uh, mm, uh, I agree. So I, I am very, very happy uh, that you could manage the concept in some way in order to apply to concrete situation. That, that is precisely my, my idea, that to give a kind of tools in order to analysis. And the results of analysis could be inexpectable for, for us, for myself. That, that, that is only tools, metaphysical tools. Um, and so now we could questions or something or commentaries, yes, please. Yeah, I, I have a question. Where, when you mentioned the bourgeois class uh, as a part of the peasant class, uh, can you uh, or could you uh, explain uh, the bourgeois class as a remnant of the hunters gatherers society, as a gather uh, as gather part of the society, because uh, there is there are uh, very uh, similar things uh, they do. They uh, only, uh, uh, for example, uh, they uh, use as the main tool for survival uh, gathering stuff there they didn't make. Interesting, interesting idea. Maybe I didn't think about that, but that is very interesting uh, uh, remark. About bourgeois as well, uh, there is interesting analysis of Marcel Moss and Georges Bataille concerning how this... Uh, but gatherer hunter society was based on the balance. You take, maybe you don't produce what you take, but you give what you take. So that is in the rights, in, in initiation. So you eat, you are eaten. So the, the main right of initiation is to be eaten. To, uh, you kill uh, the beast, you are killed by the beast. So there is a kind of, you uh, obtain, you lose. So if you uh, gather too much, you should destroy that in the orgy. That was the, based on the, on the balance. And the bourgeois logic is a little bit more warrior-like. So that is not balance. So you, uh, you, you gather more and more, accumulate, so there is a kind of asymmetry, and you don't destroy that. So that is the growth, that, because gatherer society is based on the balance, and bourgeois consciousness is open, it's conflictual. So they try to, to have all the richness, take, accumulate, and uh, the, the growth of uh, richness is the uh, ideology of bourgeois class. So it is conflictual, so it, it creates unbalance. That is the difference. But maybe methodology, methodologically it could be some parallels. In a way, uh, yes, that is true. But when you accumulate enough, 
as a gatherer or as a bourgeois, you become the target of the other. And eventually, in the end, it's all taken away from you. You do not get to keep anything. But, yes, but uh, uh, in, in uh, hunter-gatherer system, there was the, 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 the idea of potlatch, of destruction of the extra products. That is main feature of gatherer society. Uh, so not only when you become the target, but when you uh, uh, accumulate too much, you should destroy it or you will destroy it. It, it. Not because they would, would like to take that, but that is a, a illness. Uh, but bourgeois illness, it's sickness, they try to accumulate more and more and all the construction of prevision of, of development of modern economy is based on ill or limitless growth of the rich. So there, there is, they could not imagine the world when there is a limited quantity of goods. So the goods should be produced more and more, uh, oligarchs should be more and more rich, and idea itself that it could have limits goes against the concept of bourgeois mind. So they, um, they could not stop by themselves and they should be killed everybody as a kind of the other, other uh, uh, wave of revenge. So they, they gather, they, they, because that is dominant part in the uh, Bataille, George Bataille concept, dominant part. So, uh, in, in order to keep the society economically, materially, um, normal, balanced, you should destroy its damned parts, it's, it's your damnation. But capitalism is accumulation of damnation. So, it is a kind of, they can commit more and more and more crime and injustice in order uh, to, to make this damned part grow. That uh, maybe they are hunter gatherer gatherers, but they are mad hunters and gatherers, bourgeois. So they, they follow some, some pattern that is um, conflictual, as for example, but um, the warriors deal with death openly, heroically. They deal with an uh, unbalanced situation. They, uh, they are traumatically to be warriors, to, be, to have the trauma. But bourgeois would like to have a trauma and not have a trauma. So they, 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 that is completely a perverted type of man, bourgeois. Uh, so they, they would like to uh, um, consume and not produce. They would like to have and not pay. They, have, they, they want to trick and not to be tricked. So they want the eternal growth uh, that will be uh, recompensed by nothing. So. That, that is um, with no with no pay with, uh, with eternal life artificial intelligence. So that is pure pathology. Uh, bourgeois class uh, modernity is pure pathology in any senses. And um, but uh, this uh, interesting remark. Uh, 